This video is going to talk about some post-processing techniques for Lumion exports in Photoshop. In this case, we're using Lumion to just build an aerial perspective, and there's a lot of great qualities about Lumion, but there's also some things that you can do in Photoshop to really help enhance your exports and make them more vibrant, more interesting for your projects. One of the simplest things you can do is a filter called Camera Raw Filter, and what we're going to do is just drag this uh, original layer down. We're going to make a duplicate of it, and we're going to go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter right here in Photoshop. Now this brings up a dialog that's used often with photography, especially if you have a camera raw file that you take from a DSLR camera. Uh, you really have a lot of ability to manipulate the image. And what we're going to do is actually do some of that here, but just on a flat JPEG. One of the first things we'll do is we'll take the highlights, we'll bring some of those back and take the shadows. This is probably the, the biggest thing. We'll really start to brighten it up and take some of those dark shadows that often you get out of the default export in Lumion and really bring it back. Also grab uh, maybe the exposure, brighten it up a little bit, and uh, we'll make the whites whiter. Uh, make the darks a little bit darker. We don't want to go too dark since they're pretty heavy already inside of Lumion. Also play with a few of these other sliders here. Maybe take the clarity. You can bump it up. It makes it more crisp. You can dial it back. It gives it more of a, a hazy feel. I tend to like that. Change the vibrance. One of the other things, and especially with these sky settings, it feels a little warm, so I'm going to take the temperature of the drawing and just dial it back just a little bit. So we can continue to play with these, and there's uh, even additional tabs in here. I'll often adjust sharpening, play with the curves a little bit here, but we'll just stick with the, uh, this, the basic uh, camera roll filter settings right here and go ahead and say OK. And notice the difference, right? If we see sort of before and after, we really uh, liven it up. Now there's also some things you can do in, in Photoshop where uh, maybe we brought in a soccer field and it feels a little too bright and limey in here. And so what we're going to do is use the lasso tool to, uh, to just select this area. I'll probably do a better job selecting this, but for here we'll just kind of get a generic feel right in here. I'm going to grab uh, this adjustment layer and go to Hue and Saturation. There's a few different ones you might try here, but I'm going to try uh, saturation so that I can take down the lightness and even dial back the uh, saturation, make it feel a little bit darker. So you might play with these a little bit in here as well. One other thing that I'm going to do, especially given this lighting, is I'm going to add a lens flare. And it's something that I would use cautiously. It's kind of hokey sometimes to do this inside of Photoshop. You see it a lot, and it's kind of an easy thing. Uh, but in this one, I feel like it might actually help the case. So what I'm going to do is just create a new layer. And we're going to say edit and fill, and we're going to fill it with a solid color uh, of black right here. So it's going to do a solid black. We'll then go to filter, render, and lens flare. And I'll just click around in here to see where I kind of want to point it. Obviously, it's up here in the top right, but I don't want to go all the way that way. I'm just going to move it probably something right about here and just say OK. What that's going to do is going to put that lens flare on my scene. Now it's on a solid black layer and I don't want to multiply it. I actually want to do what's called screen right here. And you can see where that sort of light source is coming from. I'm going to move it kind of up into the top and you can see that lens flare as it sort of runs across my perspective here. I might move it around, try it in a few different places. But again, we don't want it to be the star of the show. We just kind of want it as an extra detail. So I'm going to dial back the opacity a little bit on it. Just have a a little touch in there. Now one of my favorite things to do inside of Photoshop is simulate a, uh, a lens blur that allows me just to focus in on the core part of the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, use a few keys where I flatten all of these layers together and create a single layer on top while still retaining all of these. And so on my Mac it's going to be Command Option Shift and E. What it does is creates a new layer up top. So it'd probably be Control Alt Shift and E on a PC, and it creates this new layer that is uh, just a, a composite of everything underneath it. And from this, what I can do is go to Filter, Blur, and Lens Blur. And I'm going to grab this Lens Blur. I can change the radius of it, uh, adjust the settings. I, I kind of have these settings close to what I like to use already. And what it's going to do is blur the entire image here. And so we'll say OK. So we've got to blur over everything, but what we want to do is add a layer mask on top of it. So I'm going to click uh, this, add a layer mask. And uh, if you remember our layer mask, white means that it's fully effective, black means that it's not there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the black to my foreground color. I'm going to hit B for brush and go up and grab a soft round brush. 
what this is going to allow me to do is uh, create a large brush right here and just sort of paint in the areas uh, with black. You can see it showing up in my layer mask here. And it's going to reveal the area that I want to be in focus. And so I'm going to kind of move around here and I can obviously can kind of click through. And if I were to click too much, let's say I accidentally clicked over on the soccer field, well, I could just flip my colors right here and just paint it back white uh, to de-emphasize that. And what it does is it creates kind of a focus on the core part of the project. So you might uh, shrink the size of it a little smaller so that you can get uh, some of this stuff to show up. And uh, of course, you might flip it back just so you can blur maybe some trees that are in the foreground that you want to hide a little bit there. And so you can see the difference if I turn this on and off. It really does kind of draw your attention down into the spaces that we want to highlight right here. I'll continue to add some of these adjustment layers on top. Uh, maybe in this case I'll go to, uh, to curves here. We'll do a standard S curve. Where we make the brights brighter, the darks darker, uh, just to kind of strengthen uh, this overall view. And what's great about these adjustment layers is that I can just turn them on and off and see the before and after and see if I like it. And if uh, I feel like it's too strong, I can dial back the opacity of that uh, adjustment layer to maybe get halfway in between with a 50% right there. So these are some tricks for taking your Lumion export, really brightening it up, adding a few things, whether it's color adjustments or lens flares, or maybe you're even bringing in uh, some new objects uh, into your scene, fixing some colors with a fountain or a tree. Uh, and this is a way to really sort of fine-tune uh, what you're doing with your Lumion exports.